On one hand, we have taking care of a child, which is something that requires a personal and emotional connection. On the other hand, we have robots, lifeless metal that's manufactured by businesses with a focus on making money, which starts us off with the question, are you the type of person that would let a robot take care of their child? Some of you are saying yes, because you trust the companies that make the robots and you don't think that they would really try to harm your child, while others of you are saying no for a lot of different reasons. When answering this question, it's important to consider the intentions behind the business. Robotics companies want to be held at the standard of a technology company. This means that when kids are left in front of a TV, whether it be for video games, Netflix, YouTube, movies, etc., the technology company isn't liable for how this may affect the child. That's exactly what these robotics companies want. After all, nobody wants to be held liable for damage to children. This means that it's likely that robotics companies will actually undersell the ability of artificial intelligence. That way, they can market these robots as toys. This would get them inside of homes where they can then use the robots as surveillance systems, for cooking, or for even home appliances. But in order to do that, advertisements are going to have to stand out to both parents and kids while staying compliant for any consumer protection laws. Because of this, we're expecting a range of products, some with cutting edge capabilities and others with human traits. I mean, we've all been there, right, when a kid's just driving us nuts and we need to have some sort of entertainment or distraction for the kid. What if you give your kid a robot that can play catch with them when you're just not feeling up for it? Or if on another day you're too busy rushing to get to work and so you use a robot to make breakfast for your kid before they go off to school? Just imagine the amount of freedom that parents would get by leaving their kids home alone with robots while that kid's watching TV or playing with other kids. When we put it like that, these marketing techniques would likely get robots into hundreds of thousands of homes. And this would be the first wave of robotic nannies. Once the robotic nannies are in, it's only a matter of time until we hear a disaster story. This is a slippery slope because once it happens once, it's likely that it's going to continue to happen. Usually when there's good, there's bad, so it's likely that we'd also see the media seize stories of robots saving children in unexpected ways. The same way we see similar stories about adults or dogs or cats saving young children on the news. This would further personify machines, which is something that we already do often in our society. While these good stories wouldn't necessarily make people believe that we should leave kids alone with our robots, it would certainly build trust with the robots. Once this happens, it's really only a matter of time until more parents go out to buy robots to take care of their kids, that way the parents can escape and finally get some peace. And that's where we would start to see even more horrific headlines. One potential way that businesses would likely deal with this is calling back any robots that have already been purchased and redesigning them as a whole. But depending on how bad these stories are, the robotics producers may need to be concerned about robots being outlawed, especially in extremely rare cases of abuse or neglect. While these might sound extreme, we have to consider that injury and death happen from much smaller things like lawn darts or faulty toys. In this case, we end up blaming the faulty toy rather than the parents. And this is when legislative prohibition would begin. Not every product is made equally. After all, no one's banned guns or cars. And these are things that cause a lot of injury and death to children all over the world. Despite the horrifying amounts of human lives lost as a result of careless use or design by both cars and guns, our society values these items as too important to our economy and our right to personal freedom. Instead, we have government protection that guards how these items can be distributed. Could robots fall into this same category? Robotic childcare would have a big impact on the income of childcare employees. The addition of AI aid would be able to accommodate more children and more people. This would improve the perceived value of robotic nannies as a result, driving down revenues in an already low-paying profession. Another side effect that this would have is that many service businesses would start to expect parents and taxpayers to invest into AI robotics to take care of their children. This would start to grow into what people would consider the new norm. Even something like standard house care would become something of the past. This is because if we can invest into technology's ability to perform these simple tasks, it would improve our entire quality of life. 
Furthermore, robots would actually be very dependable, more than people. The actions of robots would be 10 times easier to predict than that of humans. When we consider that robots would be available 24-7 to our children, they'd likely never forget about you, and they would never ignore you, then it becomes likely that we start to see more relationship problems develop between parents and kids as kids start to depend more on the robot than their own parents. Let's take this a step further. A child's capacity to connect with their parents affects their capacity to make friends, find love, and generally interact with society over time. We're concerned that children who like the predictable encounters with robots would actually establish lifelong preferences for machines over people. This significant possibility can already be tested by examining how children and adults respond to AI opponents in online gaming as opposed to human competitors. While these researches have not been completed yet, there are mandatory warnings about how addictive these technologies can be for children. So much so that there are suggestions about time limits for robotic exposure and engagement. However, even if we find associations between children who prefer to interact with AI and the manifestation of introverted behavior, this doesn't necessarily suggest that AI and robots would negatively affect these kids. These gadgets would likely offer stability and comfort. This would help kids feel more worthy of themselves. More generally, we shouldn't rule out the chance that AI toys and robot nannies will prove useful in unexpected ways. For instance, there's a probability that long-term exposure to AI will improve a child's comprehension of what it means to be human. Every country in the world, with the notable exception of the United States, has ratified the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, which enumerates some fundamental human rights for every child. This ensures that children have a voice when it comes to topics that impact them. Technology could make it easier than it currently is to assess each child's capacity for participating in specified activities. However, a robot or the company that made it can't be trusted to evaluate a child in real time or on an ongoing basis. But kids and adults alike would definitely learn something from interacting with robots. Research shows that robotics and AI are already influencing family dynamics. This is done through smartphones and AI helpers. In these cases, a child's able to use the AI to actually get evidence that would help protect the child from perceived danger. As children gain a knack for working with AI, they'd be able to use these technologies to form individualized legal and advocacy tools. They could use technology to defend their rights to contest and nullify parental or guardian restrictions. A development like this would require legal protections for AI product responsibility and transparency. This could potentially make kids way smarter than their parents, but not forever. See, both parents and children alike are equally susceptible to political and advertising influence. We have to realize that these children are gonna grow up in a reality where they're gonna be relying on robots and AI for their mental health and dealing with any difficulties at home. But the fact remains that the robots themselves won't be able to love our kids. Robots are manufactured items that are ultimately created by companies looking to profit. They're going to need to represent the interests and preferences of both parents and children, all while making sure that they provide adequate regulatory control. Just like with many other much less interesting toys, we have to remember that our kids are going to love their robots. Alright guys, that is the end of this video. If you enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more.